hear the hum. I've made about uh, 40 quilts in the last two years and have 20 additional unfinished projects where I dabble to understand a particular podcast guest pattern, technique, or invention, but realize I had to move on to something else. As I quilt, I think about intellectual property and usually copyright. In an interview with Abby Glassenberg early on in the project, I was asked what qualified me to undertake this study as I embarked upon it. I think my answer was something like everything I've done professionally was leading up to this moment, <laughs> but um, I don't think that was <laughs> I don't think that was what she was expecting. So let's take a look at what I meant. Cultural historian by training. I earned my PhD in cultural history from UCLA with a focus on how people express and sometimes heal through art and writing in war and after war, and in particular the Great War, World War I. I also studied biography and worked in the oral history department at UCLA, where, where, where transcribing interviews was one of my jobs in grad school. In 2019 and, to, and 2020, I was awarded the Green Bomb Fellowship at the Newcomb Institute at the Tulane University to go back to this work looking at narratives and fiber arts and how we write our lives in, to, in our crafts. Law training. I went to law school after my PhD work because I had a lot of copyright struggles in writing my dissertation, which was a generational biography on the First World War generation. I stayed an extra year to, to earn an LLM in international trade along with my JD. And then after law school, I had a one-year postdoc fellowship at the London School of Economics where I taught British copyright and international copyright. I also began a non-resident fellow since 2004 at the Stanford Center for Internet and Society. There we moved, there from London, uh, we moved to Seattle University where I, was, I taught for a year and then I was offered a tenure track position at Tulane Law School in New Orleans where I have been ever since. I've been teaching intellectual property, art law, entrepreneurship, and social media and advertising law at Tulane University since 2007. I've been cited by the Supreme Court in Golan v. Holder in 2012 for my work on a project called The Durationator, a research system I invented that determines the copyright status of any work anywhere in the world. But I never forgot my roots. Creatives and scholars working in a copyrighted world, I took on projects focused on art law, video games, and music, and I kept asking the same question. What is the role of law in creativity? I was, and still am, on the hunt for the answer. Entrepreneurship training. I also learned a lot about entrepreneurship and became the Jill H. and Avram A. Glazer Professor of Social Entrepreneurship, which funded both the Durationator work and the Just Want to Quilt project for five years. Uh, I then was the LePage Faculty Fellow at the A.V. Friedman School of Business at, the Tulane, at Tulane University for two years as well. Ron Gard, my husband, and I started a company for one of my projects, and it was hard. We struggled. That was 2008. Since then, we have both taught entrepreneurship in many forms, and we recognize the needs of entrepreneurs to have understandable guidance and knowledge to move forward. Now, we formed Quilting Army Crew LLC um, to study entrepreneurial the entrepreneurial arm of the Quilt, Just Want a Quilt project. And unlike our first company, I'm all in and will leave no question unanswered. There is no longer hesitation about thinking about and understanding uh, what makes an entrepreneur makes mean what it means to be an entrepreneur so i began this project as a cultural historian an intellectual property law professor focused on copyright for creatives and an entrepreneur i was not prepared though for what i would learn from the quilting industry and the quilters i would meet i am transformed just want to quilt training so for the last few years i have been immersed in quilting in the quilt industry and in making a quilting army I've gained, tremendous, I've gained tremendously from this project. I've learned by doing, listening, and chatting. The friends are real, the quilts are flawed, but still amazing. I have dedicated thousands of hours to learn the process, the industry, and the art of quilting to better understand the intersection of law. I feel like this is just the beginning and we're 300 or more interviews in with over 300 posts Oh, sorry, with over 3,000 posts, over 24,000 comments, 67,000 reactions, 2,500, now over 4,100 active members out of a total of 2,800 uh, members. 
Every day I learn a little bit more about the interaction of art, community, and the law. One more bit and then we're done with this chapter. When the story of two hats. When I was interviewed for my present job at Tulane Law School, I had to give a presentation to the faculty, after which the faculty traditionally asks hard questions. One of the most intimidating older professors, Professor Oliver Hauck, who now has retired, um, barked at me at, from the back of the room. It seems like you, you want copyright both ways. You aren't taking the side of the creator or the user or the user of culture. Don't you need to pick a team? My answer to him was no. We are always both creators and users of culture. My creator hat. We are all creators of culture. Every one of us takes photos, writes emails, um, and doodles. Um, for many reading this book, we also create all kinds of physical things, art quilts, traditional quilts, baby quilts, protest quilts. Others may create photographs, paintings, drawings, graphic novels, rugs, woven art, pottery, and many other objects. Each of those is potentially protected by copyright. My user hat. We are also all users, borrowers of culture. No one creates in a vacuum. We use building blocks. Quilters use those found in Barbara Brackman's Encyclopedia of Quilt Blocks. Others may use design motifs on ancient, from ancient wall or pottery. We are all inspired by art, nature, and our fellow quilters and crafters. So when you think about copyright, you will think with both hats. You are a creator who is potentially protective of your work. To create that work, though, you are a user, relying on others' works, techniques, things in the public domain, and ideas. We're going to work through each of these concepts and more uh, in order to better understand how copyright works. And of course, the hat matters most of all if you're using the works in a commercial setting. Everything gets more intense um, when it's in a commercial setting. We'll leave that for the rest of it. We'll leave that for later in the book. And that is the first part of the book. Part one, we'll look at the basics, why we quilt, the basics of intellectual property. Part two, we'll look at deep dive on basic concepts of copyright. Part three, looks at practical things, registering your work, um, and, and new things like the CCD, the, the copyright thing. Part four, looks more carefully at a working definition of fair use, which is changing as we speak. And part five, addresses specific scenarios. We bring everything together at the end, and we even have a quote that we made that the book. I do hope that you come and turn it, tune into this. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, next time, we'll do chapter two, why we